Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We are Emily Quarles Maurer and Mary Ryan. Oh, she didn't say her name. Okay. <laughs> and Mary we Ryan. Here. Sorry, I sorry about that. <laughs> and we are here to welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Pottstown. This morning, we are once again in our virtual sanctuaries, also known as our living rooms and dining rooms and decks and patios all over. As we would, um, we will have music this morning played by the lovely Carly Shell. Thank you. And we'd like to send a shout out to Rick Dusky for once again being our head Zoomer. Thank you. <laughs> for over 50 years, the UUFP has been a liberal religious voice in the Pottstown area. As you use, we believe that reason and wonder can coexist, that we can honor the teachings of those who have gone before, even as we explore our way into the future, and that no one is outside the circle of justice and compassion. We hope that your spirit and your heart and your mind are refreshed as we commit ourselves once again to our seven guiding principles. In this time more than ever, we embody the words of Kenneth L. Patton, we arrive out of many singular rooms. We gather here this morning still within our singular rooms, reaching out across space, our hearts connecting, even though our hands cannot touch. We gather not because of our creed, but because we share a promise to support one another on our spiritual journeys. Our services are different each week, but the loving kindness we offer one another in this community remains the same. So whoever you are, wherever you are, and whomever you love, we're glad that you're here today. Uh, now we have a moment for announcements. So if you have an announcement, as usual, just wave and unmute. And there um, are no announcements. Wow. I only, well, I think I'll just oh. repeat the one about any water pictures. I have Miranda's, I've got Kay's, got mine. Emily, do we have yours? Uh, no, but I can send them today. Emily, so we need everybody else, e even if just your swimming pool. Mine's going to be Donna Cave swimming pool. So don't forget the water pictures. All right. Well, even in this time when technology is so vital in providing us with connection, it can still distract us from one another. So at this point, I'd like you to remind you to put notifications on silent, and then I invite you to take a moment, to take a breath, to rest your eyes, and to listen to the sound of the chime. All right, and Mary has our chalice lighting words this morning. Okay. There's the chalice. Um, the chalice lighting words this morning are by a man by the name of Ben Soule, who was a member of the first parish in Lexington, Massachusetts. And I, it sounds like they were written recently. Out of the darkness, light. Out of the light, warmth. Out, yeah, out of the light, warmth, out of the warmth, joy, out of the joy, togetherness. May this flame hold us for the time we are here with one another. Now let us pause in a moment of reflection and listen to a musical offering from Carly called I See You in the Stars by David Lance.
Thank you. That was beautiful, Carly. Why is it doing this? For our opening words this morning, Elena Westbrook encouraging, encourages us to remind ourselves what is real. In a world ravaged by violence, by hatred, by conflicts that seem eternal and insoluble, sometimes the only thing we can do is be still for a moment to remind ourselves what is real. The sun that rose this morning, the dirt under our feet, the air whispering in and out of our lungs. This hour, try just to be present in each moment as it unfolds. Your simple attention is what makes each moment holy. And now Carly will play one verse of Hymn number 108, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. another one I've missed. Thank you. The reading for today is called Super Tiny. It's by Sunshine Jeremiah Wolf. Um, Reverend Wolf is a congregational field staff for the Central East region serving congregations in western Pennsylvania and across Ohio. Once there was a little girl named Amanda 
who loved to help other people. She helped her Papa David and her Poppy Caesar to clean the house. She raked up leaves in her neighbor Jim's yard when he was in pain and couldn't do it himself. And she tutored her friend Sarah in math. So when it came time for her class to do a project to help people in her hometown, she was excited. Teacher Mike assigned each student a community of people that they should help. Some would help people living with illness. Some would clean yards for those who could not clean their own. Each project was a little bit different. Teacher Mike told Amanda that he would like her to help people in Walden, the poor part of town, who are hungry. He said, you can do any type of service project you like, but I want you to help those who are hungry. Amanda couldn't wait. She thought all day about what she could do. When she got home, she told Papa David and Poppy Caesar about the project. I want to make sandwiches and take them to the people who are hungry. Papa David and Poppy Caesar and their neighbor Jim and her friend Sarah made 100 sandwiches for the poor people in Walden. The next day, Poppy Caesar drove with Amanda to Walden. She had placed each sandwich in a bag with a piece of fruit. She tried handing out the sandwiches, but no one really seemed interested in them. She offered them to people who were young, who were old, who were brown, who were white, friendly and rude, but the answer was always the same. Oh, um, I ate earlier, but thank you. Then she saw another little girl about her age. The little girl seemed to be watching Amanda, observing her with a look of laughter and curiosity. Amanda approached the little girl. Would you like a sandwich? The little girl looked at her for a moment and then said, aren't you gonna ask me my name? Amanda was a little embarrassed. Oh, I am sorry. My name's Amanda. What's your name? My name is Tiny. This name was clearly appropriate. The little girl was Tiny. Why are you handing out sandwiches? Well, it's a class project. I was asked to help those who are hungry here in Walden. So my Papa David and Poppy Caesar and Jim and Sarah and I made sandwiches to give everyone. Tiny laughed. Well, we do get hungry here sometimes, but we never take food from strangers. Some of my neighbors go to the soup kitchen each evening. She paused to laugh some more. Then, your teacher really asked you to help the hungry? Amanda was a little upset that Tiny thought this was so funny. Without really thinking, she blurted out angrily, well, what would you do then? She didn't mean to get so mad, but she did not like, sorry. Lorelai, if you're going to be loud, you're going to have to go to another room. <sighs> Amanda was a little upset that Tiny thought this was so funny. Without really thinking, she blurted out angrily, well, what would you do then? She didn't mean to get so mad, but she didn't like the thought that somebody thought her being helpful was funny. Tiny stopped laughing and looked seriously at Amanda. You really want to help us? Amanda nodded, but didn't speak because she was too mad. Well, we have the garden that the city gave us. They gave us seeds, but most of the seeds are bad or not food that anyone would be able to eat a much of, like turnips. Tiny made a grimace. Ugh. Who needs a thousand turnip seeds? Amanda laughed. Tiny explained that what they really needed were healthy seeds for foods if her community would eat and tools to help dig up the land and water the garden. Tiny said that if Amanda really wanted to help, she could get her class and her dads and her friends to write letters to the city council asking that a grocery store be put in the neighborhood because the closest one was 45 minutes away by bus. Tiny and Amanda talked for a long time, and not just about the needs of Walden. They both liked to jump rope and sing songs and make bird calls. Poppy Caesar spent time chatting with Tiny's mom, and soon the two families were friends. Amanda decided that her project would be to ask her church, her class at school, her family, and her friends to come down to Walden and ask people what they needed. They helped the community get the tools and the seeds for the garden and shared in a big harvest meal in the fall. It would take a long time, 
but eventually they would help get a grocery store in Walden. They had a big festival to celebrate their success together. Amanda learned a big lesson that day. She learned that you cannot decide what people need help with. You have to ask them what they need and then do what they need. She also learned that sometimes if you ask somebody what they need, you just might make a friend. So in this time when we're putting physical distance between ourselves and our neighbors and our coworkers and our friends, it sometimes is difficult to feel close enough to connect over the parts of your life that are important to you. If you are weighed down with sorrow or bursting with joy this morning, please take this time to share what you feel with us. And as with announcements, just wave at the camera and you can be unmuted. Okay, well, um, I have uh, two joys. One is uh, the lovely dinner I had at uh, John and Kay's uh, with Bob Hawken. They, 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 um, it was as a thank you for feeding and petting the cats while they were on their anniversary trip. And it was very much appreciated, although not needed, because we got to go to use the pool, which was plenty payment. Uh, and while I was there, I, one of my earrings came out. I discovered it when I was at home. And the following night, Kay went out with a flashlight and she found it. Because you have the way to look for shiny things is in the dark with a bright light. So I uh, say thank you for that. And life me, I'm trying to remember what the other one was. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that big a deal. All right. <laughs> Never mind. So thank you. I have a concern this morning. Um, this 13 and a half mile lake, um, we just got a notice about it is contaminated with um, some kind of bacteria and they're not recommending that people swim. Oh my. Listen to oh. Yeah. It's a shame. Spirit of life and love, be with us today as we celebrate with one another and comfort one another. Let us take a moment to reflect on the joys of seeing friends and on the sorrows of lakes that need some time to be unpolluted again. And on all of those joys and sorrows that are held silently in our hearts. Now, Carly will play hymn number 352, Find a Stillness. I will turn the service over to Mary. Okay. Um, this sermon started out as a uh, title. And then as I started writing it, I thought, well, okay, it's going to be kind of short. But um, it's called Making Lemonade. And then I added and cookies and cake. And you all know the saying, the old saying, that when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And sometimes that's easier than others. And it can come, uh, pertain to many, 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 many things. But this time I'm talking about 2020 and the pandemic. 
And I think we would all agree that 2020 has been one giant lemon. And, but you can only make so much lemonade. And in my case, at least, you have to have cake and cookies and pie to go with that lemonade. So I've been doing a lot of baking since this all started. And as it seems, has half the country, at least. When I went to Costco this spring, there was a sign by the flower limiting the buyers to one bag, one 25 pound bag. That was in April and I've already gone through it and I need to go pick up another. And they also limited butter and other baking essentials. I've loved baking since I was made my first batch of chocolate chip cookies when I was a kid who could barely stir the mix or the batter when you finally added the flour. So thank heavens I'm for one of my favorite inventions of all time, the KitchenAid mixer. Having company in the house gave me an excuse to do it even more. As I think everybody here is aware, I had the boyfriend of the young woman, Macy, who, used, who grew up next to me. And some of you know is a, you've watched her grow up. Uh, he was staying with me so they could be together from April until about two weeks ago when the romance came to an abrupt and painful end. But that's another story. Having this 21 year old young man in my house freed me to pursue one of my personal delights, which is baking, and my waistline shows it, as does this right here. But anyway, um, it wouldn't have happened without the pandemic because he would have had another place to stay. Um, but he couldn't stay where he planned because they shut down due to the quarantine. And so I wouldn't have succumbed to the, do all the baking or so I tell myself. But expanded baking isn't the only lemonade out of lemons I've had personally, and this is pretty personal here. I've gotten to know John and Kay Price much better. You'd think just we've been at the same church, but we've seen more of each other because as payment for a tub of Clorox wipes, I had use of their pool for the summer. And I certainly got the best of that deal. It is quite heavenly. And I feel much safer when I'm in their pool than I do at the one here at our uh, community. Uh, I've only gone three times and I usually live up there, but there are more people up there. And the last time I left when more people started coming and the six foot differentiation, the six foot spacing was going to be impossible. So I have gotten my laps in at the prices and another lemonade, piece of lemonade is I finally figured out how to wear my snorkel. Turns out I've been wearing the mouthpiece upside down since I bought it in 2016. And you are free to laugh because it was stupid. Anyway. Um, and having the house guests meant seeing more of Macy. I've missed having these kids next door. And I hadn't seen much of her in ages. And she would now come over and visit him several nights a week. And we tried to have a nice dinner and a movie night. Um, the best movie night was when her boss, very nice boss, gave her a couple of lobsters. And we had lobster thermidor for dinner and came to the conclusion that we were living the best pandemic quarantine lives around. Okay, you're going, that was a, a, you kind of violated quarantine there. Yes, it was our little pod. But I was in the house all the time, except for trips to Giant. And the, they were the only two people I saw for at least two months before we expanded the group to her mother. And outside of the going to Giant, I can count on, I think I've now gotten a third hand, the number of people I have seen in person since April. One of those was last week. Another friend is moving to Virginia at the end of her, the summer, September. And we wanted to make sure we got together before she left. Usually we say, okay, what restaurant do we want to meet and have dinner or lunch or whatever at? But I'm not ready for restaurants yet. 
because I'm still immunocompromised and got all, I just wasn't ready. It's, that seems to be the place things get going. So I said, let's get it takeout and have uh, dinner. At, let's eat at Valley Forge. So like, oh, cool idea. And we went and uh, set up the blankets. I have a little picnic table and we set the little picnic table up right on top of the mowed grass uh, and caught up with each other and enjoyed the quiet, even if you could hear the faint rumble of 422 behind the trees. And then we sat there and said, this is really nice. Why haven't we done this before? It's always been here. We've had lots of meals. Why couldn't we have gone to the park pre-pandemic? And the fact is, we just didn't think of it. Restaurants are always handy. Oh, I'm going to be, you don't know, think of going down and just sitting on the ground and eating. So it's forced us all to think of other ways to do things. And since it's safer out in the air, especially outdoors. So another woman that we both know, she, said she started riding her bike because her gym closed and she would go to the gym and ride the stationary bike. Well, now during the pandemic, she's gotten out her real bike and gotten a map of all the trails in the area and riding the trails. And now she and her boyfriend are out riding bikes together on the trails in the local parks. And again, wondering, and why were we paying for a gym membership when this has always been here? So up until, and up until this Sunday, um, as an inside pleasure, I've been spending more time with Emily until we figured out that, hey, we could do it from separate <laughs> houses now. So, but I've enjoyed spending time with Emily and as we have the services here from uh, my dining room table. And we've also figured out one of our little things, we figured out what the cap was for on the chalice. We haven't needed the stuffer this whole time. It has a built-in snuffer. So it's like, hello. <laughs> and sometimes I think we just forget to look at the simple and free things. And the pandemic has made us do that. And it's made us do more things outside. And it's also helped to get us together in different houses. There we are. And Look at all the things we can do on Zoom or just on the phone, and it's going on everywhere. Like one of the things I've been doing is when we have the pundits on TV and you're watching them, I like to see what books they've got in their bookshelves. I stand up close to the TV and I see if I recognize any of the titles. And I finally did find one that I had. And my sister and I are talking more on the phone and at the very beginning, when we thought, oh, this is going to run a few weeks, we decided that we would watch the entire Luther series with Idris Elba. I don't know if you know it, but it's awesome. Um, from 900 miles apart, even though we had seen the first three series a minimum of five times each, we had a blast watching it together and then watching the end and texting commentary back and forth and then talking. Um, afterward about what we thought, a review of the last one, we weren't happy. Um, and it reminded me of when my mother and I would watch football games together. She from Wisconsin or Chicago, me from here, and we would be watching the same game and discussing what was going on, except we did run into one problem, which was her feed was about 30 seconds ahead of mine. So she would know the results of the play before I had the snap. And that was, she would be going, oh, no, and I'd be going, what happened? And then it was, oh, no. So that was kind of amusing. And it has shown how creative people can be. I mean, people have had, are posting videos and writings, and they've come up with all sorts of things that we've enjoyed during this. And reading, and some of them make it the news feed. I live on my news feed. Um, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but there was a guy who built a squirrel bar in his backyard and, um, his neighbor, the neighbor lady was complaining that the squirrels were blocking, getting in the way of her view of the birds when they came in to feed. So he took about eight hours and he built this little miniature squirrel bar. 
and it's a squirrel bar and he has um, different nuts in there looking like beer with the things looking like beer taps. So, and the nuts have, they have names like Cashew Dunkel and uh, Walnut Stout. And uh, he's got a picture of the squirrel sitting there. And somebody said, oh, that's pretty cool. So now he, they'll, he's figured he can sell this and he, he has a new way of making money. So it, uh, Emily obviously saw it because she was laughing. So I think, you know, if you can Google squirrel bar, it is pretty funny. And uh, so there's, these are a lot of things you can do. And people are coming up with a lot of things when you're stuck at home. I mean, you know, even if we're working from home, you're probably buying, in my case, when I was working from home, two hours at the front and back of each day because otherwise I would have been in the car. Now, earlier this week, because there are other things going on besides the pandemic, I got a text from my cousin out in Santa Cruz in California. And I don't know, I think you're probably aware, but she texted that she was no longer needing to worry about evacuating. Since the fire, even though the fire is still up there, is still huge, she was just expecting smoke and no ash. They managed to stop it. It is now, she said yesterday, 26% contained. And so when I called to check out with her and she said, oh, the day was absolutely lovely because the winds were blowing the smoke away from her. And she said, good thing about the fire was she hadn't had time to think about the pandemic, the racial unrest. And um, she said, who was president? Um, so here she is making lemonade out of a fire. The fire let her concentrate on something else entirely different. So I decided that was probably the ultimate case of making lemonade. And the other thing she's done is she's reignited and reset up her motion sensor cam that she's got out in the front yard to see what critters decide to visit at night because she set up, they um, the animals are coming in the town more because they're looking, fleeing the fire and they're looking for things to eat and they're looking for water. So she has a big bird bath and she fills it with water every night. And she makes, she say, I re she religiously fills it with water so that the animals have something to eat or something to drink. And she wants to see what she's going to get. Um, so far, she still wants the mountain lion. I know that sounds nuts, but a friend of hers had a mountain lion wander through the front yard a few years ago. And she's been jealous that she hasn't gotten a mountain lion yet. So she's hoping. She does get lots of raccoons, deer, and coyotes, but so far, no mountain lion. Then, the other thing that I just thought was a stitch, the chocolate shavings that rained down on a town in Switzerland after a malfunction at the cooling ventilation system in the Lint factory. One user on Twitter said, it finally happened, guys. 2020 screwed up just enough that it finally did something right. The chocolatiers said they would pay for any cleanup costs. However, no one took them up on the offer. I mean, who would turn down free chocolate nibs? So on that note, I'm gonna say if anybody else has any, uh, well, it's been maybe five minutes. If anybody else have any, any, well, has any lemonade stories that they've come up with this summer? I do. Okay, Miranda. <laughs> Gary and I have never gotten so much use out of um, the cabin <laughs> and the little uh, stove, wood stove we put in. Well, of course, not this summer, but when it was cold. Um, and I have to say, um, I was right in the middle of spring migration, so for birds burning. Mm -hmm. That's been nice. Okay. Hey. Rick, Rick, can you unmute Kay? Hey. Kay, can you unmute yourself? yourself? I think you hit the bottom. bottom. There's a mute button, button on the. I got it. it is the sound bad for other people or is that just here? 
but you're fine. Can you hear me? Um, well, I would say the lemonade for, for John and I um, has been, we've been having uh, cookouts in our backyard, which is so great. We're getting to know people a lot better that way. And um, we're making such amazing use of this tiny little Weber grill that we have. It's about 13 inches in diameter. Uh, but John can really cook up a, a meal on that. And, uh, and also our kids have been coming by uh, quite a bit more. We've been getting to see them and that's been great. Um, so I think that we're seeing so many more people um, since the pandemic in our backyard because it's safer that way out, outside. So that's our lemonade. You have your pod. What's that? You have your pod. But yes, we have our pod, exactly. Yep. All right, anybody else? Okay. Well, I'm gonna close with one, one more story about liberal lemonade. lemonade. It doesn't it start real well, 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 but it has a nice little ending. Um, there were there some, some boys somewhere, and I, I, I couldn't find it to see where, where but, but they had they a lemonade, lemonade stand, stand, and, and this is how, how where somebody was so desperate. desperate. They actually they held those boys up to the $30 they, they made at that point. point. Now, now, my first, first thought, thought was, was, well, who would hold up a lemonade stand? stand? And the second one was, 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 wow, 30 bucks at that lemonade stand. I never made 30 cents myself. And of course, the kids were, you know, they reported what did to the police, and they were very upset and scared and didn't know, you know, being out there and doing this lemonade stand. So, so what, what the police, police did, did is they, they called them, they would keep watch. And, and while, while they were they keeping were watch, a bunch of them, like, like they came in their cars, cars and they went all of them. You see the picture of all the cops lined up to buy lemonade from these boys. boys. So, so that they're, they're making, making them feel safe. And, and then the, the next day, all the patrol cars on the patrol, that when they left the police station, they all they lined up down, down the street and came, came by and drove by and bought lemonade from the boys. And, and it made, made the boys feel safer and more secure. And, and uh, they gave them a lot of money when the cop gave them 20 bucks for a single cup. So, and I thought, and I thought all, all the stories, stories about the police and everything, and lady, lady. Oh, oh, am I not, not being burned? Okay. okay. Um, um, it was it a was nice changing pace. All right. All right. I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. Thank. Yeah, but you're you're yeah. Dopplering like crazy. Ah. Just so you're aware. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't I know how much of the story you heard, heard but, but I'm all finished. finished so, so thank, thank you. you. Namaste. Namaste. Blessed, Blessed be. Stay, stay safe and be well. well. And. and uh, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll extinguish, extinguish the, the, the chalice. chalice. And Emily, do you want to say the word? word? I guess I you should say the word since I'm having you. Um, our closing words are a prayer by Bruce Southworth. O oh, creative spirit of life in which we live and move and have our being. We give thanks for all of nature's bounties. We give thanks for caring friends and compassionate neighbors. We give thanks for the communion of those who seek to serve others. Each of us carries our private griefs and burdens. Sometimes we can share these, and for the open hearts which respond, we are grateful. Sometimes the world bears heavily upon us. We struggle alone, search the depths, and long for healing, for renewed hope, for strength, which give their grace and peace. May we be strengthened in our efforts to be of service. And may we always be mindful that our lives are filled with privilege, success, and joy that are foreclosed to many. May our prayer be that we always see clearly and keep before us the commandment to care. And may we always try to be inclusive and open, not exclusive and narrow. On this day and every day, may we give thanks but let us also be dissatisfied with the world as it is. 
for a new world is waiting to be realized. May our spirits and bodies be nourished and nurtured as we give thanks and praise of all that sustains and heals and holds, of all that is holy. Amen, shalom, salam, and blessed be. And now Carly will play us a benediction before we extinguish our chalice flame. This song is called Sing to Me by Andrea Ramsey. <laughs> We extinguish our chalice with the words of Maddie Sifantis. We extinguish this chalice flame, but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of love and justice, taking it outside our walls, out to the world we live in until we are together again. Thank you all for joining us today and please stay for our virtual coffee hour. <laughs>